Sean Easton sure. says, he got three questions, so uh, we'll go with the first one. Do you guys think that anime and Eastern cartoons have become popular due to the decline in quality in Western shows? Yes. Mm. Well, I'll answer this first. I, I grew up <laughs> watching anime because American shows are like episodic and anime is like, you know, what is it called? Like a serial? Like yeah. it's continuous. It, mm -hmm. And so watching like Dragon Ball Z growing up, what happens next? Mm -hmm. And they always live in the cliffhanger, you know, like Goku's about to go Super Saiyan. You're like, I gotta see the next episode. Oh, man. And you have this really long story where someone asks you, like, what's happening in this episode? Oh, dude, you gotta watch 100 episodes to yeah. figure out what's happening here. And then American shows, it was like, at the end of every every show, it just restarts. Yes. It's just like nothing changes, and it was just gag humor. And I wasn't a big fan of that. I don't know. What do you guys think? Do you want to go first? No, no, you go ahead. Well, there's a lot of uh, history. I've been studying the history of comics for a long time because I, uh, before I did silly political strips, I was trying to get into indie comics again. And um, if you study sort of what happened to American comics in the past few decades, there was a massive bubble in 92, 93. So image comics uh, around 92 when Spawn was coming out and it was getting formed was like the peak of American comics since... I want to say the 50s, 40s, something like that. The Golden Age and the Silver Age was happening. So then the bubble burst for various reasons. And then there was a lot of uh, stores closing in the mid to late 90s uh, because of the speculator market. So long story short is a lot of creators ended up uh, scattering and doing what they're doing now, which is um, crowdfunding a lot of their comic strips. So you get a lot of the creators who want to, I don't know, I create an Indiegogo or something like that, and I say, hey, everyone who follows me, if you want to buy this book, you can back the book. Um, but what happens in Japan, there's, there was a famous story a couple of weeks ago or a couple of days ago where one manga series called Demon Slayer, I think, is outselling the entire American comics industry. Whoa! Just one. Well, hold wow. on, hold on. Manga. That was the second question. As animators, what do you think of the Demon Slayer movie? Okay. I never saw it. it. Yeah, but the the story is interesting because all right. But real, so, real real quick, Demon yeah. Slayer in America is outselling entire American comics. I'm not sure in America, but maybe worldwide. Like if you go to Barnes and Noble right now, right? If you look at the comics section, the graphic novel section, the Western comics versus the manga section, the manga section is almost always three times the size, for various reasons. But people here even want to read more manga like young people want to read manga more than american comics they're more into it for uh, numerous reasons i've always said like manga is like the mma versus uh, if you've ever seen those uh, videos of the mma fighter versus like the tai chi fighter and it's just like a brutal beatdown of like American comics look really great, but if you pit american comics versus manga manga's going to win every time why is it there's, I could do a whole thesis. Look, look, look. I'll tell you this: when I see these like ultra woke trash comics, yeah, no I one wants go anywhere near that. Well, Nobody wants. Why it. did that happen? It seems like that happened to comics in a way that it just yeah. hasn't happened to other they industries in an overt way. So most creative industries lean to the left, yeah. but it just seems like comics are really far to the left compared to the other ones, and, and in a much more overt way. They so most, took over most man. movies and television shows will have a left wing message, but they're not like making a big deal of the Get fact that they are having a left-wing woke. message not as often yeah but but Cobra. but that's but why comics disney, though? why disney, does, why don't the same rules apply to these other industries? probably because well disney bought marvel there, no, hold, hold on i i my, my my assumption is that comic sales were slumping and these mm. companies thought we're only getting white men we have this whole untapped audience of diversity of like you know non-white you know, female etc so how could Yes, that's what a lot of them do. They think their core audience is this one group, and how do we expand into mm -hmm. all these other areas? So what they start doing is making diverse messages because they mm -hmm. think that's what people want instead of realizing nobody wants that, and maybe you should just make... So, so I'll put it this way. It used to be that if you were a, a TV host, you were, you were super rich. Now there's millions of hosts who do YouTube yeah. shows who are all doing well, who are well, well off, but not like $50 million like, you know, Hannity is. It's changing. So these comics start seeing their sales decline. And instead of saying, let's make another brand new comic for this market, they say, let's make Iron Man a young black woman. Because then the Iron Man fans will watch and read and the other communities who don't now will. And it's like, no, now, now you've just made a, a, a weird character that nobody cares about. Yeah. It, it doesn't work that way. I look at I look at manga. It's not in there. 
Like I got, I got Crunchyroll, man, and I'm like, each and every one of these action shows, I just watch. I'm like, wow, it's actually pretty good. Well, yeah, I, I've never watched any <clears throat> anime, um, but I'm curious. I mean, it could also just be that the stories are more interesting to people. Yeah, what's your thesis, be... George? At least, man. I, all right, so I, I don't know if you guys know, but like, there was a company called Tokyo Pop back in the uh, mid 2000s that was translating a lot of manga. Mm -hmm. uh, back before the uh, recession of 2007, 8, there was. Long story short, they were trying to do original English manga, and I was involved with that stuff. I had my first book was published through them. Oh. Um, but what was happening with manga in those years and even in the late 90s was a lot of manga was getting published in English. Uh, that's why they started doing the whole, um, if you, the formats going from right to left, because in the original Japanese, they read from right to left. So a lot of, it seemed foreign and weird at first, but they weren't flipping the books anymore. You had companies like Viz, uh, Tokyo Pop. Uh, uh, anyway, there were a lot of companies doing this. But you want to talk about diversity, for example. Like, there were so many female creators in Japan creating, uh, like, say, shoujo series. That's a girl series. You know, um, I've got a, a couple of uh, Rumiko Takahashi. Uh, Masami Suda, Fuyumi yeah, Sorio. Yeah, Rumiko did Inuyasha and Rama. Inuyasha, dude, she did so <coughs> many. And if you want to talk about like female creators and those are how huge manga, massive. Shows. She's one of the richest uh, manga creators in history, woman. And there was no, I, there was no inkling of like, oh, she was oppressed or mm -hmm. she wasn't. She just made good books, and she found an audience that wanted to buy and read her stuff. They were crazy about it. Even here in the States, that's why if I go to Barnes & Noble, I try to like talk to some people like, hey, why do you read this series? And they mm. just tell me, oh, I just like the story. I want to find out what's happening next, even though it's not in color. Americans love books in color, but if you give them a, like Berserk, the creator of Berserk, Kentaro Miura, recently died. Everybody now was talking about, uh, all of last week, we're talking about how much they love Berserk. It's a black and white series, one of the coolest darkest fantasy series you've ever heard of they love that series is that no, by Rumiko? uh berserk yeah no that's oh. kentaro Miura. uh yeah he I, did. I, was, I was gonna say though uh uh for in inuyasha what year was that 90s uh 80s i want to say the 80s. manga at least the, and the so, anime would have been 90s probably. so so inuyasha is about a furry and ranma is about a transgender martial artist really Doing but look, there's a reason I don't watch anime. But people were no, 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 no. reading those I'm, series. I'm, like, I'm, I'm grossly mischaracterizing the uh, animes. I was also no, but in a way, time. I mean, really, that gives you an idea of the people just wanted to read a story that they wanted to enjoy. There was no uh, pushing of uh, an ideology. Yeah. For them, especially in manga, story is the king. You've got uh, the writer. All right, so you've got the mangaka who is the writer artist who has assistants working with them, and then you've got the editor who helps them write the stories. But they're really focused on what's, how, how do I get the readers to read the next chapter? Always, they're planning the story in such a way, like I just started getting onto One Piece and I, I can't get enough of it. It's so fun and I want to find out what's happening next and I just like the characters, I like the world, it's fun to read. An American comic nowadays, like I open it and I have to push myself, I have to force myself to turn the page. It's so boring. And I can't explain why, but when I read a manga, I can't put them down. Yeah, it's 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 crazy. But it's a martial arts thing to me. Like I, just, I grew up reading manga, my whole life. I I, I, I grew up hanging hang out at comic shops, yeah. and they've just always been boring to me. Have you? But if you saw a manga on the shelf, like did you Couldn't feel? Put it down. Yeah, dude. Like full, full Metal them. Alchemist. You got to know what happens next. The politics of it was brilliant. Yeah. I loved the 92, 91 is when I got into comics. I was reading like the Infinity Gauntlet. X-Force was all right. X-Men. They were good stories. Yeah. I mean, the relationship between Jean Grey and like Jubilee for, or like Cyclops and like, you know, uh, Colossus or whatever. And then and Spawn came out and it was like, oh, this is amazing. This is Jim Lee's started a new company with Image. And then maybe they just fell into the spectacle. I mean, Mar Marvel got bought. That industry got torched by Disney, basically, it looks like. Marvel was struggling for a long time. If you look at the history of what happened with Image, those, all right, Tom McFarlane, uh, Rob Liefeld, and all those guys, they were originally, they were the top guys at Marvel. And they all decided to quit at the same time and form Image Comics. There was this whole flip of, like, the whole industry turned upside down. And everyone was like, oh, all right. So a few years later, there was something called the speculator market, which a lot of comic books were selling 
uh, like a, a Superman number one sold for a ton of money and everyone's like, oh, I got to buy issue one of this book. And mm. there's all these variant covers. Uh, it, it's super rare. So I have to invest in this comic. So what ended up happening, unfortunately, was Image Comics was so successful that they were selling millions and millions of copies of their first issues. Everyone was buying them and it created a bubble by accident. Mm. And then the bubble popped. So all these comic shops, like novelty comic shops that used to be card shops, opened and then closed and everyone saw the recession is like oh comics are over but it was just a bubble so image comics is an interesting anomaly and then all right so they were struggling for a while and then uh image comics did a all right they had walking dead which was really <clears throat> really successful robert kirkman ended up becoming a partner at image after uh walking dead was doing really good um which is another black and white book, incidentally. And everybody wanted to, it was one of those page turner books that everyone wants to find out what happens next. Just go back to the 80s, man. And it was just a lot of really great stuff. Yeah. And then, I don't know what happened. Like the late internet, 90s, 2000s, it eBay, started to get dry. eBay destroyed the market. No, no, I used but, to get I, the, I don't, I, What I mean is the writing. Do so, you, so we're talking about like manga and anime versus comics, right? So I'm, I'm growing up and I'm reading comics in like 2000. And they're getting dry and boring, and I'm reading, and I'm just like, Ugh. you know what it might be? I can only read about Cyclops so many times. Yeah. Sure. But, you know, with I started watching Dragon Ball Z. I watched that in the 90s. When I was a little kid. It was on, it was, it was, I would turn on Channel 50 at 8 in the morning. It was like, or I think the only way to watch it was in Spanish. And so there was like that scene where Vegeta. That's why you speak uh, Spanish Vegeta, now. Vegeta is about to kill Nappa. And Nappa goes, Por que Vegeta? And then Vegeta <laughs> blasts him. And I'm like, Por que? And then, uh, but, but then, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm a little kid. And then I started watching and I'm like, whoa. And like the lore was really cool because I'd watch an episode and then someone would start telling me like, here's this character. Here's what, here's, here's, here's what happened 10 years ago. And I'm like, whoa. And I'm getting really, really into it. I opened a comic. Yeah, like a lot of the X-Men lore and like the DC lore stuff was interesting, but it started to get boring. Mm -hmm. And then the difference is, there's so much different manga that are that are long, that are in depth, that have different characters that I could just find the one that I thought was really good and, and stick to it and watch it or read it and get through the whole thing. Mm. I don't know, man. You you compare like the Full Metal Alchemist, the politics of that manga, brilliant, like government corruption and just the general aspect of how they have the powers they have, alchemy. They can just make things with code like they write on the tables or whatever. And then you have Death Note, which is probably one of the greatest. Fantastic. Yeah. yeah. Just brilliant. Yeah. And that's like, what can we say right now? MCU. Cool. I like the MCU movies, but it's regurgitated. They're not hiring or searching for new talent. Like the way that manga, they, all right, Shonen Jump and all those uh, companies over there, they have talent searches all the time. Submit your stuff. Submit a chapter. The editors will pick the best. You get to talk to an editor. Maybe you get to develop a series. Over here in the States. All right. So you got even veteran creators. I was talking to a veteran creator who has multiple Eisner Awards. Super amazing. He used to, I won't say his name out of respect, I guess. But like, he can't find work anymore because the editors running Marvel DC, they won't even talk to him. Because they're woke? They're woke and he, let's say, is conservative. Let's say there's a whole bunch of, I won't name names, but there's a whole bunch of conservative creators who can't find work in the industry, but they're able to get crowdfunding. There are some of them who have hundreds of thousands of dollars. A couple of them broke even millions on their books. But should, is there like an American Shonen Jump? No. Should there I be? mean, there is a translated version of Shonen Jump no, in that, that I, Right, I've, but I mean like our version yeah, of it. There needs know? to be an anthology, yes. The problem is with printing. I, I don't know if I mentioned last time I print my own books at home, let's say. I can't do a lot. Like, I'm not like a, I'm, I'm doing all this stuff by myself. But, like, to print in color is so expensive. You would have to print tens of thousands of books just to break even, let's say. Yeah, but you, you ship. But doesn't, sh doesn't Shonen do the manga chapters in black and white? They do it in black and white. But they can, yeah, they have, it's called an anthology. If you've ever seen heavy metal in America. Um, but yeah, if you look at Shonen Jump, uh, Pulp used to do it back in the 90s too. There needs to be things like talent searches, anthologies, creators. Creators nowadays, like, we're trying to do indie comics. It's just that to get funded to do them is so hard. And those of us who get funded, we're working super slow because, like, I have a book called Mary Sue, for instance, that just got, it got funded, like, months ago. And I'm trying to find time to work on it. It just barely got funding. Thanks for checking out this clip from the TimCast IRL podcast. If you want to see the full show, come back to this channel, youtube.com slash TimCast IRL, Monday through Friday at 8 p.m., where you can leave comments and super chat, and we actually will read your comments on the show. 
Don't forget to like, share, subscribe. And if you want exclusive members only content segments you can't get anywhere else, go to TimCast.com, become a member, and we even have full bonus episodes. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you all next time.